What's up everybody? My name is Michael Burpo and today you're going to be watching me paint City Light. It's of Charlotte, North Carolina and it's a gift from my friend uh, Rhodes and uh, his wife Steph. So hope you enjoy. So first things first, first things first, we got to get this yellow wash right here, yellow down to a green. It looks like a green. Yeah, it is a green. We need to get this to be very beautiful with a dark blue and then a pink wash over here. This is easy, this is just dark blue. And then everything's gonna get pretty muddy inside of here. And this is going to be crazy pink. So we're gonna kick this off with a wash. And what that is, is I'm gonna lay a little bit of water down and then I'm gonna start meshing a couple of colors. So this top one, this first wash is actually a little bit difficult because I'm fading a orange or kind of like a yellow into a green. And if I do too much of an orange, the orange and the green won't wanna play nice together and it'll give me kind of like a brown. So I have to be a little bit gentle. And then I'm gonna to try to wash this uh, this purple. And uh, purple is just such a weird color because it doesn't really wanna play nice with any other colors and it's very temperamental. Um, so I get that a little bit with using a maroon and a, uh, a blue, but, um, and then I'm adding a couple of speckles in. And I think that that will give me the modeling effect of um, that's you know going on with these buildings. And I'm trying to do this wash in one go because if I start touching it up, it's going to start feeling very um, unnatural. So I'm trying to keep it a little bit more loosey goosey. And I think it's, uh, it's coming along. Um, again, trying to uh, get some of the shadows in there and some of the form, but the form will be done and taken care of by the, the black detail. So I just need to kind of start with a good wash. And um, some of this detailing, it's like, it's a little extra. I feel like sometimes it doesn't really um, kind of feel natural or watercolor or painterly, but you know what? I think to each their own and you gotta find like what you feel like is, uh, is the right way to paint. What's funny is that this is actually a mistake that I kind of realize in retrospect um, right now that this is actually probably something I should have left white and then done the sky and then touched it up um, you know, with a green afterwards. The green that I lay on here is much too dark and it loses that luminous kind of look that it has in the photo. And it's kind of hard to get that back. So if I would have done this again, I would have painted in the sky next, left the this detail white and then gone back to it later. So one of the parts about doing washes, I always say, is you kind of want to get it right on the first shot. And what will make it a little bit more forgiving is if you put a layer of water down first and then start to blend. If you go wash into like a color into a color, it sometimes doesn't really mesh as well and it sometimes gives you more of like a hard ridge. And if you lay a little bit of water down, it plays together a lot nicer. Um, but that's also, you know, dependent on your paper, but also your watercolor br um, brush and your... Uh, um, watercolor set because some are more pigmented if you have like a, a little bit more expensive set a lot of times they'll be more pigmented which means that you need um, you know the, the water it'll affect the water much more so you can't really get down to like a, a wash into white very often um, but I guess that's kind of maybe that's an advantage of a cheaper set uh, cheaper meaning less expensive and I guess, you know, those are a great set too. That's what I did my first 50 paintings with and uh, I made enough money that I purchased my own um, kind of nicer set. And I show that later on in this video, uh, what my palette looks like and I'm using Schminkas and uh, I just really like them and I picked them purely because my favorite watercolor artist uses them and I was like, you know what, if they're good enough for him, I might as well give it a go. And uh, it's like, 400 450 dollars for a, a full set which is just it's an investment so if you think that you're going to do it then use it um if not i guess it's a uh, it's kind of you, you can't go wrong um but back to this painting now i'm adding in some detail and what i did is i had to let my wash almost completely dry and that's going to allow me to get this more kind of detailed effect and effect and because we are dealing with um an architecture style painting um, that means that there can be these kind of detailed um, harder lines and that's kind of like a, a hallmark of these buildings to catch their likeness is these kind of more wet onto dry style uh, details so i try to get my details and my uh, or my gradients in there first let it dry completely and then get my details going on um, and i make sure that they're dry so that i don't get as much bleed 
Um, and here, this is kind of a, a weird technique that I use. I don't know if it's the best way to do it, but I need to have these uh, windows put in there. So a lot of the times what I'll do is I'll just kind of paint a square for where you know the detail has to go and then I will wash around it um, it doesn't give you as natural of a wash but you know what if you're in a pinch and this is a gift I think they're gonna like it no matter what <laughs> if they can see my stitches it's kind of just more for me um, yeah and I think that it's also important to remember that colors can go on top of other colors uh, for example, I'm using this black on top of the blue and it just made it so that I'd have a more natural wash for the building behind it instead of, and I didn't have to worry about painting around the black. So I just did it in the proper order, which is dark on top of slightly lighter. And it actually allows me to do, um, do it quite easily. But I'm adding all these details just to give it that likeness. But the truth is you could probably leave out a lot of the details and people would still understand that what building it is. That's just kind of the characteristics of, uh, of a building. One of the skills that I am very much still working on for myself is painting straight lines. These verticals are so difficult. Um, I'm using this liner brush, but again, it's just very difficult not to give them a wiggle. And if you uh, try to use something like a straight edge, it just doesn't really get you there. Um, I've seen people use rulers or I've also seen people dip rulers into uh, paint and then doing them. Um, I just, I have not quite found the technique that works for me. It's definitely something I'm working on, but if you put them in faint, People don't really notice. And something you'll see me do right here is actually I'm going to stand up and I'm going to get at a different angle. And it's because it's easier to draw better lines when your hand is going in a natural motion as opposed to like sometimes like a pushing motion. So just uh, sometimes you got to change your, your angle of attack. Hey, if you made it this far, maybe leave me a like and a comment uh, that says, hey, I really like this painting, or let me know what you would have changed about it. And this sort of kind of marks the halfway point of this painting. I did the entire distance, which is this, uh, these buildings in the background, and now I'm going to do the foreground. So I did the background and uh, kind of let it, you know, get figured out. And then the foreground will kind of overlap it slightly or sit on top of it um, with these buildings that will cover part of it. And I can always add the shadows of the buildings back into it to kind of carve out the likeness a little bit more. Uh, but what you'll see is I'm constantly trying to um, layer up these shapes and I'm kind of breaking everything down into these individual shapes of these buildings, but not just the entire buildings, but of the different angles of the walls. And you can see that I'm kind of have to keep, as long as I have the angles correct, I can paint whatever color I want into there because the structure will make sense. So I'm kind of trying to shave them all and like make sure that the, the shadows 
are just against the edge of these different shapes instead of allowing them to um, kind of go wherever. And that will allow you to kind of act like as if these um, buildings are casting shadows on each other, which is kind of will allow the, the scenery to, to come together. do that street light so the reason why I'm not doing that street light yet is because some of the things behind it are wet and if I'm painting a very detailed stroke like that and it touches oh, and it touches the wet it will um, throw the it, it'll bleed and it'll get rid of my detail so I'm gonna let that completely dry before I go in there um, so I'll probably do that like close-ish to last. And you can study um, kind of order of operations for your paintings all day if you want to. But I really do believe that this is something that you learn by just painting more paintings, what the order of operations should be. Um, I've had paintings in the past that were very well executed, uh, but with poor planning and kind of... Um, organization on the page it kind of left something out of the page um, so if I was to go back and do it again I think it would be better just by the nature of knowing when can I paint just a huge wash on the background and when should I carve around the uh, the image and like kind of knowing which colors can sit on top of each other because it's not just oh secondary colors can sit on top of uh, primary colors it's like that's not true oranges are really weak you can put any color on top of an orange just about unless it's a blue in which case it'll make a brown um, reds have to be kept um, primary because if you can't put them on top of anything so it's just like learning how your palette works together is going to kind of inform you more than anything i can teach you about oh you should always paint the background and the foreground and then you'll just learn it just by doing it painting this as a gift. Um, I don't know if you met him, but it's for my buddy Rhodes. And Rhodes is moving away from Charlotte. And I am uh, painting him a little, a little gift to remember the city by. And it's tomorrow. He's having his going away dinner uh, tomorrow. So I kind of need to kind of wrap this up. I couldn't, couldn't exactly wait any longer. Um, palette reveal? All right, you wanna see? Here, you actually, there's what my palette looks like. But if you look, oh my gosh, it's just, see these are the greens and the purples and the blues that I've been using. Um, here, let's go like this. But I keep my purples up here. This is more of a maroon. This is like a, a blood red. Uh, this is like my blood colors. Um, and then I go into uh, these oranges. Orange is also a very uh, hard um, uh, color to use. This is like a weird fake orange feeling. Um, this is my favorite uh, sky blue. This is my other sky blue. Um, this is my dark blue that I use all the time and I love this one. This is my black. This is my brown black. Brown, brown. This is my uh, tanner skin. And then this is my uh, flesh skin. This is a white that doesn't really work. Yellow, yellow. And I have two yellows because one is always tinged with green. And if it's tinged with green, it is terrible. This is my grass green. Grass green is excellent. 
um, but this one I've only got one good grass green and then I've got my dark green this is my blue green uh, more of like an olive green and then this is like a fake green like a city artificial city uh, green I keep my black my pitch black up here this is actually an inkwell um, yeah, and that's pretty much how I do it. I pretty much only wash uh, mixed colors on this palette now, on this side of the palette, mainly just for just for convenience sake. Um, yeah. You know, something I've been thinking about a little bit more is how there's like a lot of process videos on uh, on YouTube and on Facebook where people will show like how they made something or it's a time lapse or something and it seems like there's less about like almost like strategy art strategy and i feel like that's something that's like the actual part that's really difficult to learn because i do find that a lot of the times you just have to kind of go out there and, and do it yourself and make a lot of mistakes and then you'll kind of learn from your mistakes uh, if you pay attention and then also at the same time i do think that if i can explain a little bit about what's going through my head maybe it'll illuminate something for you so that's kind of what I'm always doing with these live commentaries uh, when I'm uh, streaming on Twitch is I try to talk through like what's going through my head. And sometimes <laughs> there's nothing going on in my head and I'm just kind of in the flow state. I'm just painting, enjoying myself. Um, I find art to be extremely therapeutic and extremely um, escapismable <laughs> as like a, a way for me to get away from things. But at the same time, I, uh, I think that I'm always thinking about a million different parts of the painting. Um, what's the order of operations? I mentioned it before, but it's like, um, you, you'll learn that if I was to paint the foreground in this painting, it's before the background, we would have ended up with a very different result. So it's kind of just, um, you know, maybe you try that one time and it's going to, you know, give you a bad result or less optimal result. And then you'll know to paint the background and then the foreground first. So um, just something to kind of think about and, and, and keep in the back of your mind. Um, I'm really enjoying it though. delicate spot detail good detail honestly good detail I don't know if you guys can even see that detail but the little sky crane in the back clap good detail all right guys you know what I'm kind of cooked I kind of I think that that's it I think that that's kind of where we're gonna call it um, let's stamp it. Let's stamp it. Let's stamp it. This painting was a really good exercise for me because, um, it was a lot of shapes and it's a lot of gradients. And I also felt kind of, I feel like I loosened up a little bit. Uh, I really like how I painted the lower half of this painting and the upper half is kind of something, it kind of demonstrates what I need to work on. Um, I think my gradients are a little bit kind of, a little bit lacking in how um, some of my favorite artists do it. Some of theirs, I have so much punch to them. And uh, I think that the only way to get better at it is just by doing a lot of them. And I'm kind of pleased that I did one here. Um, but I think that, again, it's it's successful in that it looks like the, the thing I was trying to paint. And I feel um, like it was really well received. And uh, when I showed it to my friend uh, Rhodes and his wife, Steph, um, I think that they really appreciated it. It felt like what I'm trying to paint. And I kind of think about that sometimes with paintings. Um, it's this likeness. And I think that likeness is very common with, with faces. That's how we paint something and you're like, oh, that looks just like him. Um, that's likeness. And, but uh, 
cities and buildings can have that too. So I think I'm always trying to capture that. And with this painting, um, I think that when I painted in that sky crane, for some reason, I just felt like it just boom caught the likeness really quickly. And uh, I'm rather pleased about that. So I don't know. I think the only way to get better at these is by doing a lot of them and um, kind of getting better. All right, there she is. I actually really like it, you know? It's kind of a, it's busy painting. This isn't excellent, but you know, what are you gonna do? Um, I think that this is pretty good over here. Uh, I really like this and I kind of like that, you know? Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this painting uh, process for City Lights. It's my painting of Charlotte, North Carolina, for my friend um, Rhodes and his wife, Steph. Um, here's a photo of me giving it to them uh, the next day, and I think that they really liked it. I hope you enjoyed. Bye.